I am so excited to be here on another edition of What's Next with The Winning Edge. My name is Corrine Million, the executive director and co-founder. We are not just a nonprofit, but a community organization developed or created to develop the next generation of leaders in sports and entertainment. As you know, every Wednesday, we try to bring you conversations that not only expose you to the various opportunities Hey there, how are you? I love it when repeat viewers come back. Um, yes, every Wednesday, or we try every Wednesday to bring you conversations that get you thinking about the different careers in sports and entertainment and really just prepare college students for life after college. I'm so excited to bring you today's guest, Nick Fofanis. He is a former track athlete from Northeastern and he is out here um, in the venture capitalist startup world and he's gonna come on and talk about what he's doing, what he's done, and I hope you enjoy the conversation. Please make sure if you haven't already, um, drop your questions Hey there, love it when people come in. Um, drop your questions in the questions box. As always, you can drop them in the chat as well. But we are so excited for this conversation. We are looking forward to it. We're gonna wait for Nick. But as we wait, does anybody have any questions for me? Um, I see we have a question. Would you recommend? I, I wanna leave that question for Nick when he comes on. But if you have any questions for me, um, feel free to drop them in the chat. While we wait, I wanna make sure if you are not signed up for our mailing list, please go to our website, wegamechange.org and sign up for our mailing list. We also have a page on our website that'll show you all the events. Oh, look, hey, look, my best friend, look. Um, we are, we try to encourage a lot of resources for the next generation so check out our schedule page page at wegamechange.org backslash schedule to see all the things not only that we're offering but people are offering around the country and nick is here with us now we're gonna go live and so excited for this conversation this is a conversation like uh, last week's conversation with Tiffany um, that is going to discuss how student athletes um, and former student athletes can use their their skills to continue to generate revenue. Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm good, Cassidy. How are you? I have Malcolm with me here, too, the co-founder. What? What's the name again? My Malcolm. name Malcolm. Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm, how are you? Nice to meet you. How's everything going? Awesome, awesome. Corrine, that's Corrine. me. <laughs> Um, we're so excited to have both of you on with us today. We have some repeat viewers who are, know all about this conversation. But I always start any conversation with our guests with a simple uh, combination of questions. Who are you? What do you do? And why? <laughs> it's a good yeah. start. Malcolm, you want to you wanna hop in? <laughs> yeah, I'll start. So I'm Malcolm Johnson. Um, just to give a brief background about myself, I grew up loving the sport of track and field. I competed at a very high level in high school and luckily had the privilege of competing at Harvard in the Ivy League. And exactly. Sorry, like say that again? I like to give shout outs to people when they join, so don't mind me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And, and I was a sprinter and I've always been very passionate about entrepreneurship. And while in college, I really wanted an extra source of income or find a way where I could generate extra money. And like with NCAA rules and all that good stuff, it's, it's very hard for a college athlete and the, the life of a college athlete can be extremely hard. So with Nick, who I met through mutual friends and he also competed in track and field in the Boston area, we came together with this idea of providing a platform where college athletes can make money in their spare time by awesome. training. Awesome. So Nick. Tell me who you are, what do you do, and why, and then we'll get into all the other stuff you guys want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as Malcolm said, I was always passionate about track. I ran track since I was maybe like a nine-year-old kid, just kind of coming out, just jogging around. Um, but basically, you know, I actually grew up in – I lived in Russia before. I grew up in Russia for my first, like, 14 years of my life. Then I moved to Italy, and then from Italy I moved to, to the States. So I've been in the States now for about 10 years, 10, 11 years. And then- Welcome uh, back. Yeah. <laughs> basically been in high school here, um, 
dominated supported track and field there. Uh, I was a national champion in, in the decathlon. Um, so I finished high school very strong, went to college uh, to Northeastern, which was actually down the street from Harvard. So that's exactly how we kind of like came together. We had a lot of mutual friends, a lot of mutual connections. So from there, we kind of connected from there. Um, and then we realized that, yeah, like making money in college is tough. Like we, yeah. and, so, so we just decided to like, you know, start doing like businesses here and there. Uh, so we worked on multiple projects together. And then we finally decided that like, hey, we need to really buckle down. The corporate world is not necessarily for us right now. And we really want to do the startup route. So we created a startup called Pro League and we, that's exactly what we totally came here to talk about as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys answered way more questions than uh, than usual in the beginning. So let me give me a chance to catch up here. Um, but so, Nick, you mentioned that you ran track at Northeastern. That was something. And, and Malcolm, you ran track at Harvard. You know, as a student athlete, a lot of people assume, oh, they have access to everything. They, they don't need much. But we but we all know that when there's that resume review workshop on campus, you're at you're at practice. When there's that career fair, you're at an away meet. What about your college experience? And I'll take one answer here. Um, really made you feel like, hey, I know after college, I'm not gonna go pro, or I'm not gonna make a lot of money going pro. So what were you doing? What were you doing during college that kind of prepared you for what you're doing now? So my, actually, my experience is very unique to the college. So Northeastern has this thing called co-op program. And the co-op program, what you actually do is, like, you don't graduate in four years with a bachelor's degree. You graduate in five, but you get 22 months of work experience, which basically means in fifth year, you just work in full time, and that counts as a fifth year. But the thing about it is you can do those co-ops instead of going for a semester to school. You can do that co-op during your sophomore year. So you can work full time for seven, eight months at a corporation or whatever you want to do, maybe even your own startup, uh, because Northeastern is the top three entrepreneurship program in the country. So we have like basically like people would invest money into you to actually start something. Um, so basically coming in my freshman year, uh, as an athlete, though, you're not allowed to do, especially if you're a scholarship athlete, you're not allowed to do the co-op until your fifth year, really, like end of your fourth year. And I knew that getting your co-op on the fourth year is going to be extremely tough. You have to have experience by the time you get there. Right. So my I basically said, like, hey, I really don't have much time to do anything else. Nobody would hire me. I'm just going to start my own business completely right now. Just might as well play around with it. I'm not going to wait, like, four years to do something. Right, right. So so my freshman year, using my connections in Europe, I basically started a marketing agency for high school athletes to get to the next level, whether it be pro or if they want to go to school in the, in the U.S., at least can you know the full process of how to do so because I went through it. Um, and I basically helped them do it for a fee. Um, and then I kind of like worked through a lot of other mini startups throughout, um, throughout the journey. And then my fourth and fifth year, I did um, two major co-ops at the top investment banks. And then uh, from that kind of stuck around in finance, um, worked for State Street for two years afterwards after I graduated and then kind of jumped out and here we are. But my, my experience is very unique just because we had that call up routine. Uh, yeah. time, it's like, I just knew that like, it was all on me. There was no one else to like really help me out during the process because I had practices, because I have to be at one place and another. Like I used to do the startup literally at like 2 a.m. Like I would basically right. say, yep, practice at five in the morning. It's like, I sleep for three hours. That's just not healthy guys. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, however long it took me, but I mean, it, like college was definitely like, I made certain decisions that like definitely hurt some of my social circles, but it kind of got me to the next level on the other end as well. So it's, it's just, a, it was a lot of, a lot of decisions for me, but at the same time, I had that co-op program that definitely helped me out, which I totally feel for my other, um, my other friends who didn't have the, such opportunity to do so. So it was a lot harder to get a job after coming out of college. Awesome. So, you know, you, you mentioned that you didn't have anybody, but you know, as a student athlete, there are things that um, I always talk about. There are advantages that you have as a student athlete. You have a network that many students on campus aren't going to have. You can go to your athletic department. You can go to your coaches, even your former coaches, um, to kind of lean on. So, Malcolm, what are, what skills that you gained as a student athlete, whether, you know, through practice, competing at the elite level, do you feel kind of helped you stand out as you started these businesses early on as you started you know the co-op program and and your different businesses 
I think the one major thing that being a student athlete really taught me in college was first off discipline. Like it really, really tests your discipline being a student athlete, being able to juggle school and being in the Ivy League, it's, it's pretty rigorous as, uh, and being able to balance track. Right. Well, it's like on top of track, you have practice six days a week and then also you're traveling. So one thing I really learned was to be disciplined and also prioritize the important things in life. And I think that's uh, benefited me really well at transitioning into the entrepreneurship world and starting pro league because I have those, I have the discipline mindset. I'm able to prioritize tasks. I'm able to execute and get things done no matter what I have on my plate. So those are the two most important things that I've um, learned from and benefited from being a student athlete. Awesome. Well, you guys have said it enough. So let's talk about Pro League. You know, I came across Pro League when Nick used the power of LinkedIn to reach out to me. Uh, if you're not on LinkedIn, make sure you're taking advantage of that platform. It is a real thing. I know a lot of young people feel like, oh, I, it's, that's a scary place. But if you utilize it in the right way, it can bring you conversations like this. So Pro Lead is a platform that I really want to expose to our audience and people like Jacquez, who's on the who's on the video right now, this is something that he could even take advantage of. Give us like that thirty second. You're in the elevator with Maverick Carter, and you're t you want him to get the the entire LeBron James Foundation and everything behind you guys. What are you telling them about Pro Lead in the elevator? Awesome, hit it. So what ProLead is, ProLead is an online marketplace that allows for individuals and everyday people to have access to elite athletes. And those elite athletes are athletes who have NCAA collegiate division one experience, semi-professionals or professionals. So the analogy I like to say is think of Airbnb, but for elite athletes. So a user can come on and book an elite athlete, see their whole trainer profile and book them for their available time slots. Um, and I love that you compared it to an Airbnb because that was something people didn't think about before it came like, you want me to go to somebody's house and stay there and, or you want me to give my house up. What about pro lead do you think is going to get people to sign up? What makes it different from the other platforms that are out there? If there is even anything out there, why should people pay attention? And if you're an elite athlete, take advantage of this opportunity to generate revenue. I think what makes Pro Lead extremely unique is the fact that we're the only platform out there that really is capturing the niche of elite premium workout training. There are a couple other platforms out there like Fitness Trainer that provide an online marketplace for people to go out and find personal trainers, but we really want to capture this market of providing elite athletes to access to everyday people. And another very unique thing about Pro Lead is the fact that we provide complete autonomy to the trainers. We allow them to determine their pricing, work as much as they want, or as, li as little as they want, determine their policies, determine where they want to train. It's, it's, it's very, very flexible. So, that, so that's one thing we're really trying to do. And no, many platforms aren't as flexible as, as us. They, for example, like fitness trainer, they choose the prices for trainers, so. Yeah. Plus, you can coach virtually and in person. So it really full autonomy. Like whatever you want to do, we basically provide a platform for you to build your business on. So you become like a fitness entrepreneur seamlessly. You really do not need any other subjective. We will handle all the payments for you. We'll make sure that everybody gets paid. We'll continue all the maintenance. We take care of all the legal stuff. We make sure that basically you can just log in, sign up, and just coach. And exactly, you're going to get paid for everything. And also, like, on top of that, like, against our competitors, we actually here for athletes. So we charge complete minimal fee for uh, each transaction that happens. So we only charge 10% uh, from the total cut. So basically, that means, like, you don't pay us anything unless you actually get paid. So wow. it's like you still get to keep 90% of your income. So And then you set the price. So it's, awesome. it's the win-win situation there. So when, when was the official launch? When did this come to the masses? What was the day? When, what is the day that you guys have a certificate that you'll tell your grandkids about? <laughs> so it happened actually only two, two and a half weeks ago. We fully launched. We already have over 90 trainers signed up. Uh, and How many? 90, 90. 
and we have 375 daily users so far. And then we also are actually in the process of creating an app soon as well. Uh, but we created so many new products in there so that it's even easier to make money without actually spending too much time on uh, coaching as well. Uh, and we totally have to talk about that as well, how that's going to go. But, but two and a half weeks ago, that was the date. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was September. I think I believe it was actually October, October 8th, 7th. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so something. you guys are babies. So is there anybody in the platform that you can name drop that's, that you can say, hey, they're in here right now in case I'm a student athlete, maybe I play football at Florida State and I'm getting ready to think about, okay, my season is going to be over here in January and I'm getting ready to think about what I want to do. Maybe there's going to be some lag time between training and going to the league or this may be my last season. Um, is there anybody that you can kind of use to coax me to sign up for the platform? Absolutely, yeah. So if you actually log into our website uh, at oneperly.com and you just click on football, we actually have over 12 coaches on it specifically who are either pros or semi-pros currently and uh, or played at a very, very high level. Um, so the one that I can totally recommend is Nate Hall. Uh, he currently plays for the Texans. Uh, he's on our app. Uh, you can book him. You can coach. He can coach you online. He can coach you in person. You guys decide in whatever way. We just the connector. So we just make sure that you have the access to those people uh, to provide the best value they can um, to really accelerate your goals and make sure that you hit them. What, um, what, so let's say I am, I think I'm an elite athlete and I sign up. How do you, is there an onboarding process? Is there an application process? Is it just like I sign up and this is, what is it gonna, what's the process look like if somebody wants to join Pro League from a coach standpoint? Yeah, so the overall process is you just go to our homepage and you scroll down and there'll be a button that says become a trainer. So you'll click that button and it'll direct you to our trainer application. And it's, um, it's not too rigorous, but it asks you a series of questions like about your background, identity verification, your schedule and all those things like that, just so we have information and we're making the right and correct choices of trainers that we choose to onboard. So you guys are the final. You guys are the final determination on if somebody is is eligible to become a coach. Yes, that's we, correct. Yes. Yeah. We, so we look very very closely at specific things that the trainer has in the application. We we'll make sure that everything checks out with exact standards that we put in forward. Um, and after after it hits, you you go forward. That's it. You will receive an email from us as an invitation, and uh, we go from there. Once you list it, you're ready to get booked. Yeah. But awesome. it's well, around 20 to 25 minutes to really complete. Awesome. Well, I think, you know, last week we talked about Cure Story, which is a great, is going to be a great platform where content creators can generate their own revenue. Pro Lead is also another great platform for athletes to create, gener uh, create revenue. So this is something once the NIL drops in 2021. Oh, yes. Perfect timing, Cecilia. This is the girl that's, that loves to talk about NIL. She's on here now. So she's if she's here to hear about Pro Lead, this is a good thing. Um, but NIL is dropping next year in 2021. What is it do you think the student athletes who maybe I'm that softball player at Tennessee and I'm not going to make that much money from like the autographs and stuff. Why should I really consider doing this? If I already am balancing academics, my schedule and all that stuff, what is it like you've said a lot of things, but tell me like the one thing that's going to get those elite athletes that aren't at those men's basketball football, getting them to sign on to this platform. I mean, it's as simple as you're making money in your free time. You're really just allowing the next income to come in uh, to really propel your acceleration in, in income, um, basically making it sure that everything is aligned, that your comfortable living is sustained. So it's actually like you don't have to get the job. You actually determine your schedule. You do everything. So if you want to only coach on Saturdays at 2 p.m., you can do so. And this is the easiest way to do it. So... This is, this is the, the biggest value proposition we have for you. Well, this was exciting. Before we go, is there anything now that you've laid it all out, you've let people know your background, two runners from Ivy League schools who have the experience working with um, VCs, starting their own creators, uh, starting their own businesses, serial entrepreneurs. Um, you have the platform. I want to give you a minute each to kind of really 
not just sell yourselves, but sell this platform and why our audience, whether they're viewing now or later, should take advantage of this opportunity. Hey, Malcolm. So Mal Malcolm must be the spokesperson. He gets so excited. He's like, let me tell you. He gets really close to the camera. He smiles really big. So I'm excited to hear what Malcolm was about to say. I, I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. But at the end of the day, being a college athlete and not being able to profit off our image and likeness and just not having an additional source of income to help supplement, like maybe going out with friends, like taking your siblings or your parents out to dinner to treat them or something like that. We didn't have that opportunity. So we really want to give back to the community and give back to student athletes and just allow them to profit and make money as they should because they are talented people. And if you are a talented person and you want to train other people to become talented, we believe that you should be paid for that. You should be paid for your talents, that's for sure. I mean, think about it. If you even have a full ride scholarship during the times when people go for like spring breaks or like summer breaks, like you do need to find something to do, like whether it's to be an internship or something, but you can build your own business on your own equity, like build everything from the ground up for yourself. That's going to be sustained for a very long period of time. You don't have to get the, you know, like a lot of people say like the boring corporate job, you know, like this is the easiest way that you can continuously do whatever you love, continue going. The biggest example is for us, you know, we were very, very elite runners. And so it got to the point where it's like, look, if we go pro, there's not that much money in track. So unless you're number one in the world, you're not really going to get paid that much. So it's like, how are we going to sustain? We have to get the job right on the side. But how can you train on the side and work like over 50 hours a week on just like a regular job, right? It just becomes toxic, really. Yeah. <laughs> Something like this, if we had it in mind, like we would have, we would have continued like propel with our um, athletic careers. However, we just we just decided to do something else. So, well, we have one question from one of our repeat viewers. He wants to know: Would you recommend that athletes specialize in one sport or train year round? You're talking about having elite athletes on. Um, this is something I have my opinion on, but I'll let you guys kind of speak to the recommendation on having athletes. And I think there's a difference between maybe like the the youth like hey i'm in middle school high school versus college by then you kind of stuck to whatever you're gonna do but what, what would your recommendation be so i guess it just depends on again as you said like are you in middle school are you in college are you post-college almost right i'd say in middle school you want to experiment as much as possible um you want to just check out any every sport that you can and then by the like your sophomore year of high school, junior year of high school, you really want to start focusing on one specific sport and then just execute as much as you can on it because like your base level of athleticism is already built by that time. And then from there, you can really just propel in every single sport and you can do the, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. You can do group coaching sessions. Like you, you can really just propel from that level. If you're in college, of course, you've probably been recruited for one sport, but you know, most but, yes. like, yeah, exactly. We have multiple friends who did multiple sports in college as well. Um, it just all depends what exactly what you want and what your goals are. So it's not like no, not everybody needs to be LeBron James. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing it literally for yourself, you're doing it for fitness, you're doing it for character build, you know, for the discipline, like you can do anything really. But if you want to be the next LeBron James, of course, you need to like start focusing on one sport. And I'd say by junior year, you should start figuring out what that one sport actually is. Well, I am like getting ready to text this video link to every student athlete that I know uh, at former right now until that NIL drops uh, in 2021. Um, but I think if you're listening to me, I, I, we said it, I've said it so many times, make sure you're finding ways to eat. You know, closed mouths don't get fed if you're not putting yourself out there. If you are the sixth man playing at Kentucky, if you go home, you can have a basketball camp, right? People are gonna pay for you to say, "Hey, I went to the I went to camp with that Kentucky basketball player." And so, this is a great platform. Where can people find you? I'm gonna put it in the chat really quick. You can find us at um, on LinkedIn or on the Instagram. Uh, my name is Nick Fafana. That's the easiest way to find me. Uh, I'm on all platforms. It's the same. Um, Malcolm. And my name is Malcolm Johnson. So you could find me on Instagram. Add me. Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Uh, feel. Awesome. Free Email if you have any questions. It's Malcolm. Absolutely. M A L C O. 
I'm typing it. Okay. Did you get that part? Malcolm at ProLead.com. At one ProLead. So O N E. Use there. There is only one pro lead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the same thing for me as well. It's Nick at one oh. pro. Lead. Feel free to email me anytime. I'm totally happy to help out with anything. Uh, you can That's also dot com, but people know what it is. <laughs> you can also. So Cecilia, this is your this is your space, girl. If you feel like this is something we should be talking about, connect with these guys. Let people know that this is out there. This is going to be something that's going to blow up when the NIL drops next year. And I want to be part of the journey. And I love that you guys are doing it. I love that it's people that represent a lot of the student athletes uh, competing at the elite level. So please continue doing what you're doing. I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks much, so much man. for having yeah. us on. It was no pleasure. problem. It's such a pleasure again. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that was Malcolm and Nick from Pro League. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. If you're not subscribed to our mailing list, check out our website, wegamechange.org. Make sure you check out all the other things that we have going on or other groups going on, wegamechange.org backslash schedule. We are going to be back here tonight at 7 Eastern with um, Jordan Maven from the Atlanta Falcons, and we're going to have another great conversation. Thank you again. See you at 7.